Chapter 10, 2019, The Bench Warmers, Year 2. Now, 2019 brings a whole new playing field for Knights of Horror. We were in the process of trying to find someone else to fill those uh, shoes to be the, the, the co-host, the man behind the camera, and just overall a second person for Knights of Horror. Knights of Horror has always meant to be a two-person gig, and I needed that second person. Right around this time, Sammy moved back to our hometown, and we got to hang out a lot more. So much so that I asked him to be a part of Nights of Horror, specifically the podcast. We are live in the studio. I'm here, Mindless Horror Podcast. It's been a bit. I'm here with my new co-host, Sammy. Hey, what's up, guys? Sammy, Sammy, Sammy. Some stuff is falling in the back. Guess I'm getting a little too comfortable back here. Anyway, uh, we got a bunch of new podcast equipment, uh, and it's going to be fun. Yeah, I got this blue thing in my face. Yep. It's going to be cool. Sammy, you want to introduce the audience to yourself a little bit? Uh, yeah. What, what, do, what do I tell them? I don't know what to say. I don't know, man. So, what, I mean, you're not too big into horror. No, I'm a scaredy cat. So, yeah. like, imagine Andy from the Allen show. That's probably me. So, if you ever want to, like, have a fun time watching a scary movie, it's probably I'm probably the guy to bring because I'm bring. a big guy, but I'll be, like, at the edge of my seat the entire time. And me, I'm just a horror fanatic and... So we shot our first podcast together. That was a lot of fun. Uh, Sammy was not the person that you know today. Sammy was actually a lot of, more afraid of things like horror and stuff like that um, before joining Nights of Horror. It's because of Nights of Horror that he's actually started to like this stuff a lot more, especially haunts, especially horror movies. Um, it, it, it grew his love for th those things even more. And... This was a big year for us. I mean, we were making content. We were we were trying to start to plan things out, and we were getting real serious come time summertime. And this particular summer in 2019 launched something that would really change the way we do the podcast. In the summer of 2019, a young woman by the name of Jacqueline Winters decided to... Uh, do a podcast with us. A not scare actor from Scary Farm. Um, her name is Jackie. And she... How long have you been doing this, the uh, the scaring at Scary Farm for, Jackie? This was actually only my second year. Um, last year... or I'm sorry. The 2017 year was my rookie year. And then I was back at it this year. Awesome, awesome. So we got a scare actor. We're going to get into the mind of a scare actor this week. And we're going to probably ask her a bunch of different questions as to what it takes to get ready what is the process of going through and all that so i'm very I'm very excited definitely i'm this super is, stoked this is something i've been wanting to do for a while get get hands on a on a scare actor and just see how it goes i've been going for the last like three years but i've gone off and on and stuff nice. so i'm very excited to see she probably scared me probably <laughs> she probably did she didn't scare me because because you didn't go i'm a scaredy cat you're a scaredy cat so that's that's easy and they and they feed on that we had never interviewed scare actors on the on the podcast, but we thought it'd be fun, and we thought it'd be something different. And we we thought it'd be something you guys would enjoy. You get a behind the scenes look of what it's like to be a scare actor at all these events. So she was kind enough to come on the show. Uh, we had a really great conversation, a really great show, and we got to know her a little bit more going into Not Scary Farm, and it really helped with our Not Scary Farm experience because because of her. Uh, she introduced us to so many people that uh, we have the pleasure of knowing now. So that really sparked something in us as far as to start interviewing more scare actors. It didn't really hit until midway through the season of Not Scary Farm because we were going we were going to Not Scary Farm more than Horror Nights in 2019. But mid season is when we decided we were going to do something in the month of November that would really forever change our style of podcasting and. and add a new chapter to the Knights of Horror. So we have a great summer. I mean, we, we, we did the interview and it went, went really well. It's actually still on the channel to this day because um, that is like a historical landmark episode of when we started interviewing characters. 
What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? This is the Knights of Horror here with Sammy. And our good friend Fosto joined us today. We are here at Midsummer Scream. We're going to walk around the event. We are going to do some podcasts, attend some panels, enter the Hall of Shadows, do it all. Come check us out. We have a lot of ton of content coming out for you this weekend for Midsummer Scream. I hope you guys enjoy our footage and our um, cover of Midsummer Scream. Uh, so let's get to it. <laughs> We went to Midsummer Scream. We had a great time that year. We we did the uh, Gold Bat that year and just enjoyed it. That was Sammy's first year at Midsummer Scream, um, and we just had a great time. Uh, went through all the panels, you know. Hung out with TLEV, saw a lot more other friends, and we just had a great time. Midsummer Scream, that was our second year going, and, and we had a, a blast. And we just we had more coverage than ever than the year before. We, we went nuts with coverage, interviews with POVs, live podcasts, all the panels that we did on top of the vlog. We went nuts with, with content that weekend. Um, I, I think that weekend we posted anywhere from 20 to 30 videos just on Midsummer Scream. We went crazy because we were excited to be a part of this. We were excited to further extend what we knew about Haunt and and see there was much there was a much bigger world for it. And, and it really, really motivated us to want to be a bigger part of it as well. And so that's when we decided we were going to go to more than one Haunt this season. And there's one haunt in specific that is a brand new haunt for this series. But if you've been following the channel, you, you know what that haunt is. The haunt that gave me my first ever media badge. And I will never forget them because for me, that was a very proud moment of, of how hard we worked to um, get accepted as media to this event when we were still s somewhat of a lower channel. A and they really took the shot on us and... Um, I, I can't thank them enough for that, and I, and I miss this haunt dearly. We actually got uh, invited VIP media uh, guest. Uh, a special shout out to Queen Mary for inviting us out to the event so we can experience it. Um, I'm super excited to go through all the mazes. I'm super excited to get some beer in me. Because um, if you guys know, on the fucking live streams, we drink beer. So, yeah. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, join me and Robert. Me and Robert are out here. We're going to be covering the event. There's going to be a ton of photos on our Instagram. Yes, sir. Um, and we're just going to be covering the event, maze walkthroughs. Uh, we'll see what happens. Maybe we'll catch up with a couple of our YouTube friends here. We've already seen a couple, so we're fucking excited to be here. Yeah, so. super excited. Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain speaking. Welcome to the 10th anniversary of Dark Harbor. Robert too? Oh my god! And that is Queen Mary's Dark Harbor. When we first went, we'll start with Queen Mary Dark Harbor, I guess. When we first went to Queen Mary's Dark Harbor, we had never been to this haunt. Uh, this was something brand new to us. We were excited to be somewhere new, and I, I you know, I have a, a love and and familiarity with the uh, the Queen Mary itself. So to see that was a thing of its own. But to have like a haunted event, like a haunt there was even better. I mean, this was the first time I ever went. I didn't know what to expect. Uh, I walked out knowing that there's a lot of bars at the event. Uh, there's secret bars with collectible tokens, which I thought was really cool. And what was so unique about this haunt is the fact that the ship is actually haunted, that walking through those mazes actually felt uncomfortable at times. I would then see more sliders other than not scary farm, which was really cool. Uh, fire shows, which was really cool. And it was just an all out good, ex great experience. And, and I'm glad I got to go in 2019. What the future holds of that event now is uncertain, but I hope to one day see that haunt return. Uh, mind you, on 2019, it was its 10th anniversary. So it was a lot of fun. I, I remember uh, going with TLEV. We were all kind of like a little, little press crew, just kind of walking around and, and getting our content, shooting our vlogs. Uh, we went through, of course, uh, what was it, the circus, 
which was um, a very interesting one. It was uh, literally what it says in the title. It was just a circus, but had a little bit of a twist in it, which was hosted usually by the ringmaster, which was really cool. Uh, you had B340 based on Samuel the Savage. So B340 is supposedly the most haunted ship or haunted room on the ship. So they made an entire maze based around the background of B340 and how it became so haunted. So that was really cool. Uh, Intrepid, beautiful, beautiful uh, maze design. That was when I saw the full scale set of the church and I was just blown away at what I saw and just walking through that graveyard and stuff. Easily one of the best set pieces I've ever seen in any maze. So I really love the uh, the um, structures and, and just the overall detail of that maze. So beautiful. Very, very beautiful. Um, then you had uh, the new one for that year was Rogue, which was kind of an origin story of the captain of how the ship sank. And this one was a pretty good one. I mean, you got to really experience the kind of what it would have been like for the ship to sink. They really brought that to life um, with the Rogue wave. And, of course, I got to go through this secret bar, so that was a lot of fun. And then at the end, you know, you had, like, just the, the ship pretty much sinking which looked really fucking cool the thing about dark harbor i will say is is even with the outside mazes they had they did a really good job designing them um and uh, the mazes one they didn't really have to design the maze ones um the, the ship ones on the on the the ship too much because the ships are creepy enough so it brings that aesthetic to life which i really liked uh, lullaby which was the famous little uh, girl that haunts the queen mary in the actual uh, pool however they did not have this one in the actual pool i know like prior years they did and i'm kind of bummed i missed out on that but that is definitely a scary one scary mary a uh, very scary character at the event and for her to have her own maze was just really cool to see kind of her origin story of how she became scary mary and then you got feast of course which was based off the chef um that was a lot of fun to go through that one I remember hitting my head the most on because the pipes were very low. So that one was an interesting one. Um, the bars were really cool, and, and they had some really cool merch options, which was dope. Um, so I remember getting some free, uh, like, vouchers for being on the press thing and, and actually, like, getting to enjoy um, complimentary drinks thanks to Dark Harbor. And, and I had a Jack and Coke, and it was good. We kind of just sat in the VIP lounge at the end of the night and just kind of looked over at the scare zones, and we had a great time. I do wish it comes back one day. I, I really did like Dark Harbor. Um, so, yeah, that's a new haunt that we experienced in 2019. That was a lot of fun to go through, and uh, I, I hope it comes back one day. But shifting gears, we're going to be talking about a lot of haunts on this one. This might be our longest episode of Night's Horror Origins yet, so bear with me on this. Let's go back to Halloween Horror Nights, and let's get another uh, one we've been doing so many years straight. Already in pieces. What are a few more scratches? I don't think you get it. Hey, can you get the door? I got it. Well, the whole argument is flawed. I mean, think about how many times you're going to go in a month. Once? Twice. Hey, guys. Come on in. I'm just finishing up, okay? I don't know, man. It's all I'm saying. All right. Break this down for me again. You said he's got super speed, super smell, it's and It's simple. Work. He's faster than Frankenstein. Hey. Oh, thanks. Really? Are you guys still at it? Yeah, I know it's been a week. It's bothering me. <sighs> Who are you calling? I'm just getting a text. You want some of this? Sure. Yo, 11's powers are sick, man.
Horror Nights, featuring an all new Stranger Things, Jordan Peele's Us, Universal Monsters, and more. Guys, hello? Guys. <laughs> Uh, this was a great year, 2019. A uh, fantastic year, nonetheless. Um, and, and the most mazes I think we've ever had at the event. Let's start. Soundstage 29 was home to Stranger Things Season 2, which wasn't the best out of the two, but there were still a lot of iconic moments that they brought to life, which was really, really cool. And then they give a little teaser for Season 3 at the end with like Nancy and everybody in the cabin fighting off the uh, Mind Flare, which was really cool. So, you know, that maze was, it was okay. Um, I did like the first one a lot better, but this one was pretty good. Like I said, it, it covered some of the most iconic moments of season two. So there you go. Holidays in Hell. I told you this one was going to come back. This was a scare zone the uh, last year and the last episode that we just uh, discussed. Holidays in Hell was a scare zone in the Metro sets. He actually, uh, John Murdy actually teamed with Figure, who has been at the event many other times, and we covered him like earlier episodes and stuff. But he teamed with Figure to create this all-new original soundtrack with this all-new original mage, uh, maze, Holidays in Hell. And it was a lot of fun. I mean, you got to go through all these different holidays. It was very, like, twisted and demented. And then each holiday had their own theme song, which was really fucking cool. So I deeply did enjoy that. That was, that was a fun one. Looking out to the Metro sets, Universal Monsters, Frankenstein meets the Wolfman. This would be the second installment of the Universal Monsters franchise at Halloween Horror Nights. And this one was based around Frankenstein meets the Wolfman. And that was an iconic battle that John Murdy kind of took the roots of the movie and gave his own original twisted, uh, twisted twist on it. So I really enjoyed Frankenstein meets the Wolfman. Again, Slash came back to um, score this maze, and it sounded beautiful. I mean, you had the gypsy camp. You had them fighting in the Arctic. You had them just going at it one-on-one. -on -one. And I think the best scene that really sums it up, and also Easter eggs, a burnt Bride of Frankenstein, which was them on the table, and then after you pass, you got to go right between the Wolfman and the monster, and right between at the end, to your right, before you leave that room, you see a burned Bride of Frankenstein. And that was the last we would see of her for some time because she's going to return in another year. But you're going to have to wait a couple episodes for that. But nonetheless, Universal Monsters Frankenstein meets the Wolfman was a great sequel. Um, and I really enjoyed that maze. And I've enjoyed what they've done with the Universal Monsters thus far. And I cannot wait to see what they do with Universal Monsters Legends Collide this year. The Walking Dead attraction was back. We've covered that many times. So we're going to skip over it. Ghostbusters in the 747 area. Now, this maze was the underdog of the event. A lot of people said when this maze got announced that this was not going to be a good maze because it's more of a comedy. Yeah, they are right, but it is also a horror film because of a lot of the ghosts and stuff like that. They just show them in a comedic way. I, for one, was super stoked about this maze because Ghostbusters is a phenomenal film, and I knew that they can pull something off. You can use those ghosts and really scare people with them. They have some pretty creepy scenes in the, in the film. Uh, especially when you meet Goyzer and all that. So um, it was really cool to go through. I really enjoyed it. They got some of the most iconic scenes down from, of course, the secretary yelling, we got one. And then uh, seeing some of the most iconic ghosts like Slimer. You know, you got to see the dogs. You got to see Sigouria Weaver's character. You got to see uh, I am the key master. That was really cool to see. Uh, and then you got to see the final confrontation with a Ghostbusters verse um goes there at her like temple and then you got to see the the stay puff marshmallow man which was really fucking cool so i i really enjoyed this maze this was a lot of fun i'm gonna save the maze that i enjoyed the most that i had been waiting for to coming for so long for last let's go to creep show which was also in the metro sets area creep show was phenomenal they mixed uh some of the stories from the film and some of the stories from the new show at the time for season one and they combined the two for a all-out great anthology horror uh, maze we had some of the most iconic ones from the film which was of course the uh the grandpa returning for his birthday with his birthday cake uh you also had the uh the man who is kind of just like a germaphobe and the cockroaches get in which really creeped me out every single time i went through it and then you had of course the crate which was one of the most iconic ones so that was cool to see that monster and whatnot and then we went, of course, to the show, which included a werewolf one. And there was one other one that I don't remember off the top of my head, but the werewolf one was really cool. It was in World War II. You were in this prison. They, these soldiers became werewolves um, and killed the Nazis, which was a phenomenal episode. 
So I really had a fun time with Creepshow. Then it ended with the comic book inside the trash can, like how it does in the film. Um, and then the um, the host of Creepshow comes out for one last scare. This was a good one. This was in the um, tram garage area because we had uh, two mazes in the in the tram garage area. So we didn't have any tear tram this year. This is why we had more mazes. The first of the two, the Curse of Pandora's Box, the first year it came it was great, an original maze, and, and we were starting to get more original mazes, and I'm, I love when Horror Nights does original mazes out here in Hollywood. They're usually always 10 out of 10 chef's kiss, and this was no, this was another one that was 10 out of 10. I really enjoyed Pandora's box and, and what it had to, to, you know, take its own twist on Greek mythology, so just to open Pandora's box and to see a lot of these nightmares come to life was really cool. Also, it did uh, give me some points in the Try Not To Get Scared Challenge that year. Which we will talk about after we cover the rest of Horror Nights. Us was Jordan Peele's uh, latest masterpiece that had just come out, and they brought it to life at Halloween Horror Nights. And they did a phenomenal job with it. You really went from the start of the film all the way to the end of the film, and that maze was so well detailed. Uh, the scares were on point, and I just had a good time going through it. And I knew Sammy, this was something that he was very much looking forward to this year because he's also a big Jordan Peele fan, and that's one of his favorite films from Jordan Peele. So he was excited to go through it many times. And, uh, you know, we always make the joke that uh, instead of black walls, we want white walls. And us did deliver it with white walls. So we can't even complain about that one. House of a Thousand Corpses was in the Waterworld queue. Now, this wasn't the best year they did House of a Thousand Corpses. I feel like this was just kind of a last minute one put together. However, I still had a lot of fun with it because, uh, unfortunately and sadly, Sid Haig had passed away that year. So going through that maze and seeing Sid's character... Uh, really was kind of a good tribute for Sid. So that's why I think I had a lot more personal memories going into that maze. Um, I realized it wasn't the best detailed. I mean, 2010 and 2011, House of a Thousand Corpses was phenomenal. But because of Sid, that's why I had a special uh, place in my heart for that year, for that maze. So Sid, rest in peace, brother. Captain Spaulding lives on. The final maze that it was something that I had talked about wanting to come to Halloween Hornets for the longest time. Uh, my favorite horror movie of all time, which is a horror comedy. And when it came, I was a kid in a candy shop because this was also the first year we, we got introduced to John Masari. And so we were on a killer clowns from outer space binge. We had just interviewed John Masari that summer. Killer clowns got announced and it was something that I was looking forward to. I'm so happy to say that it is returning again this season for the 2022 season. So I'm very much looking forward to that. But killer clowns from outer space made its way to Halloween Horror Nights after having a very successful year in Orlando with both uh, with just the Scare Zone. The Scare Zone was very popular, very crowded every night, and so they made it a both a um, Scare Zone and a maze over in Orlando, and we had a maze over here in Hollywood. And this went from start to finish in the, of the film. You enter the tent, you go through the, uh, the clown tent, and you see the cotton candy cocoon room. You start seeing uh, other things inside the tent, the popcorn getting made. Then you eventually make your way to the town, and you go through some of the most iconic scenes of the town. Of course, the jail scene was one of them. Going to Debbie's house was one of them. Um, and then you make your way all the way to the end. Oh, they had the pizza scene, which was really cool. And then you make your way all the way to the end, back to uh, the carnival, where they have their final setup of the, of the ship, and they have their final showdown. And in and all with a giant clownzilla head coming at you. And then the final scare is the killer clown driving the invisible car towards you. Such a fun maze. They had John Masari's score in it, so that was a lot of fun. And I really just enjoy that. I'm super stoked that it's coming back for the 2022 season, so I cannot wait. Some scare zones we had were Fallen Angels, which was in the front gate. Spirits and Demons of the East, which was in New York Street. Christmas in Hell, which was French Street, which was an extension of Holidays in Hell after you got out. Uh, Toxic Six Six Tunnel, the third X makes a difference in the Metro's Lot Tunnel. And All Hollows Evil in the Metro Lot itself. And then, of course, we had the Jabberwockies Return and the opening ceremony. And then they had some 80s throwback nights, which was a lot of fun. Halloween Horror Nights was another great year. I took Sammy for the first time, and he had a great time. He actually started enjoying more haunts as we went. He really thought he was going to be terrified because of the things he heard of Horror Nights, and he actually really enjoyed it. Because he enjoyed that so much, he was very excited to check out Knott's because he had also heard a lot of great things. And Knott's had a banger year with two brand new mazes that would really change the way we look at mazes, especially 
the first one I'm going to bring up, which is Origins of the Curse of Calico. Now, not Scary Farm. We had gotten the annual pass this year. We got the annual pass. We got the parking pass. So we were going at least two or three times a weekend. Uh, from Thursday to Sunday, we were going like two or three times a weekend. Going back and forth between that, Horror Nights, because um, we had bought, I bought the Thursday, Sunday pass. So, you know, Sammy bought a frequent fear. So we were kind of trying to go everywhere as much as we could. And it was a great time. I mean, we, I, this is where we became to most now uh, the bench warmers in Ghost Town because we would just sit in the benches at night in the scare zones and really just look at everything. We would make our rounds, but we would end up in, in Ghost Town the most, uh, specifically in the Kmart Alley. That was our bench. And we just sat there and watched people work night in, night out. We had a great time, really enjoyed it. Um, but this was a great year. Special Ops, in, or not Special Ops Infected. That was the last year Special Ops Infected. And, and Sammy was happy he got to see it before it left. I had already gone through it in 2018, so I was happy to go through it one last, more, one last time on the farewell tour. And we would go multiple nights and go through it multiple times because it's proper goodbye. So we just, we did what we can, and we had a great time doing it. And Knott's was one of those events that just drew us in. I mean, we were going 1v1s on the, the zombie kill, who can get the most kills in special ops when we'd go through that maze. So we had a lot of fun going through that. And then, of course, you know, Origins, the Curse of Calico, which is obviously a love letter to Ghost Town, and we absolutely praise that maze. That is such a great maze, and um, that literally changed the way how we see mazes today because that is just straight up a beautiful fucking maze. No words can really describe it. You have to see it with your own two eyes. I've been telling many people that. For a very long time. Uh, Waxworks was also new for 2019. And this was a different take on the Wax Museum. We had the curator who was uh, pretty much killing people and turning them into his wax figures. This gave you a House of Wax kind of vibe. Uh, but an original take from Knott's. So that was a lot of fun uh, to go through. You got to go through a normal like uh, rundown Wax Museum that's on fire. And you're going through all the exhibits. And then you finally get to the back of his workshop and see how things really start working. So that was a lot of fun. We definitely enjoyed that a lot. Shadowlands was also its farewell year and uh, live by the sword, die by the sword. It was such a good time to go through that one last time again and, and to see that kind of aesthetic of, uh, of a dark Japan, which was really cool. So I was very excited to go through Shadowlands one last time and we would go through it a couple times because you know the line wasn't very that wasn't very long that you know going through that so we would we would hit that multiple times on on nights we felt like going through mazes uh Paranormal Inc had returned and Sammy was super stoked to see that one as well because that was one that was on the top of his list something that he was very much looking forward to seeing in person after hearing so much about it and there's no words that can describe Paranormal Inc you have to see it with your own eyes in order to really enjoy things and and whatnot because the effects in there were top notch and ahead of its time when it first came out and it's just a fun, all out fun maze there was multiple paths to go through which eventually intertwined to one but it was cool that they did that because you had two different areas that you would go through to explore different sides of the asylum and it was a lot of fun definitely miss it but bloodline 1842 probably gonna kill it this year Peter Peter Pumpkin Eater, which was uh, one of uh, another one of our favorites, uh, going through that one, seeing the Pumpkin Eater, and seeing it progress worse and worse as you get to the end uh, until you're in the oven, which is very, very trippy. And then they got that bug in the middle that's really creepy that gives me... Ugh. But Fun Maze, definitely enjoyed it. But the Dark Ride is something that me and Sammy very much love, going through this abandoned Dark Ride, having these evil carnies trying to kill you to get you out of their Dark Ride. A lot of fun. It really was, and we really enjoyed this. This is a cookbook classic, and uh, we definitely, again, enjoy this one every single year, and I can't wait to go through it again, but this was another one Sammy was looking forward to as well because he had heard and seen so much good things on it. And lastly, the last two, we had Dark Entities, which was the alien-based one. We thought that was cool because we're fans of sci-fi and whatnot. So to see that, it was really cool. That's when we had the idea that maybe special ops should get the uh, dark entity should get the special ops treatment, and uh, it didn't happen. But it's okay because uh, I still love dark entities for whatever reason. It creeps me the hell out. The depths, uh, one of my favorites. The underwater stuff is great. Sammy loves it. We this is where we really started quoting qu uh, cookbook so much. We even went as far that year to to make a cookbook T-shirt. And I think John Cook is the only one in existence to have one. So 
This was a lot of fun to kind of just quote the cookbook on this one and see all the different effects that he usually does at a lot of his haunts. And uh, we had a lot of fun going through this one. And just, you know, Sammy and I are big fans of pirates too. So this kind of gave us like those vibes and whatnot. And just an all out fun time. Scare zones were great. Carnival, Forsaken Lake, The Hollow, you know, Ghost Town Streets, all of our favorites. We made multiple rounds every single night we went to the event. It was just a lot of fun to see uh, a lot of people we were meeting. Um, scare and it was awesome uh and then pop it up uncensored we fell in love with that that was also the last year they did the hanging which was one of my favorite things at not scary farm and sammy got to see it for the at least one time so he kind of had an idea what it was but pop it up was easily the show that took it for us every every single event night that we went because it was just a lot of fun improv puppets i mean you can't it doesn't get any better than that and it's a good way to cool off uh to kind of relax for a little bit and just laugh a little bit so pop it up is definitely something we look forward to a lot every single year and we are excited for it to be returning this year now a new event that we had gone to in 2019 was the los angeles haunted hayride and it was something new for us we had seen it at midsummer scream and we wanted to see what it had to offer not to mention that midsummer scream they hooked us up with free tickets to the event so we were like fuck it let's go so we went to go check it out and we actually had a really good time I mean, there was four attractions for us to do. Um, they had three mazes and the hayride itself and then the giant scare zone. This was the official revamp to it being Midnight Falls. I had not known what it was previous years, but this is when they started their storyline. This is when they started a lot of things going forward to keep up with said storyline. So we go through, uh, you know, the hayride first. We go with TLEV and they suggest that we do the hayride first since it's going to be the most packed attraction that night which it turned out it was um and i had never done the hayride i've seen videos of it it looked a lot of fun and this was something new for me to do so i was like you know what let's do the hayride so we get on the hayride it was at the uh, old zoo at griffith park um in a different location than it was in 2021 um actually where it was in 2021 was near where you parked uh the actual event was right there so it was interesting to see what they did in 2021. But in 2019, we went on the hayride, and it was such a fun time. It gave you kind of like the lore and backstory of how Midnight Falls became Midnight Falls, um, which was really cool. So you got to go through like different parts of Midnight Falls that you didn't get to see when you were actually at the event. They only got to do this on the hayride because they got to expand the city that way. So it was really cool to see that. And, you know, there's a lot of like interesting things that you'll see on that hayride that you know, came out into the actual storyline of Midnight Falls, especially when you went through like the mazes and, and how everything got cursed and whatnot. Because uh, for those who don't know, Midnight Falls is trapped on Halloween night every single night. They have to relive it in, in the 80s. So it's interesting to see how they pull off that story all the time. After we got off the hayride, we got to, uh, we got to spend some time in the main zone to interact with all the characters. Now, from what one of the scare actors told me, that it's actually a good friend of mine, uh, AJ, who plays who played Reggie that year, um, because of us interacting with all the, you know, the characters and whatnot, and, and kind of uncovering the story and everything, that really popped off for the entire season because we went opening night and people, I guess, watched uh, my video, TLV's video, and I guess it just popped off for the entire season because they said the rest of the season a lot of people didn't know that they could interact with them. And because watching our videos, they they found out they can interact with them. So much so that I remember one night in the season, AJ actually went as far as to play Uno with a little kid, which I thought was funny. And he declared himself the Uno champion uh, because I think he would never lose. But I thought that was hilarious. But we got to uncover the story more, which was a lot of fun. I mean, for me, interactivity as a, at a haunt is so much fun because, you know, it brings out the story more. And it connects you to that story and ties you into that story, which I really like. So... To see that kind of, that lore behind it, that, you know, as much interaction as we did that night, it eventually got us into the mazes and, and furthered the plot of the story. Um, and that was a lot of fun. So the first maze we ended up hitting at, because that's where it led us in, was Midnight Mortuary. Um, we checked that out, and that was a lot of fun. I think that was probably the scariest that they they had at the event. The other The other ones were kind of fun. Um, but Midnight Mortuary was a lot of fun, just kind of unveiling of how it all, the curse all went down, some shady stuff going on in the Midnight Mortuary. We have like a lot of satanic stuff going on in the Midnight Mortuary and, and, and whatnot, but you know, it's supposed to be a mortuary. So like you're seeing, of course, 
you know, churches and, and everything. And you're seeing all the caskets and all the bodies in and stuff, but it's supposed to be more than that. It's starting to get a little satanic as you go more and more and deeper in. So it's trippy to see how that kind of escalated the whole midnight falls curse and whatnot. And then we went into trick or treat, which was right next door. That was a lot of fun. I mean, it has that, that classic feel of Halloween going door to door, getting candy and, and seeing a lot of people dressed up. That was a, a lot of fun. We really enjoyed that one a lot. And to see the different kind of facades they had for each house was really cool. They had different themes, like a sci-fi theme and whatnot. It was, it was a lot of fun to go through that. And it's still at the event today. Um, it, it was there last year. It's going to be again this year. Uh, so it's going to be a lot of fun to always go through that and, and check out what they have to offer. The last one was called Roadkill Ranch, and it kind of gave me some Texas Chainsaw Massacre vibes, if you would not. It's supposed to be like a slaughterhouse and stuff and, and whatnot, but it was a lot of fun to go through. It was it was pretty creepy. I think we had a really slow night run through because like, when we went through, there was like no scare actors, barely. I mean, there was inside the actual maze, and then there was a scene where you actually went outside. There was one there, but it wasn't as many as like it should have been like for a pack night or whatnot. But it was interesting to see how they kind of set up the event. It was a small little area, and they utilized the space very well. So I had a lot of fun with this one. Uh, Hayride was definitely another new haunt we got to experience this year and, and, and can safely say we did the big four of Southern California, which is, you know, Halloween Horror Nights, Not Scary Farm, Queen Mary's Dark Harbor, and the Los Angeles Haunted Hayride. Those are the big four of SoCal. Um, those are the, probably the most popular out of the haunts down here. Uh, we would go on to do, of course, a couple home haunts that year. We checked out uh, Pirate's Cave for the first time. We, we got introduced to them through my uncle, who actually had Jacob as a student in his class. And um, that was the year my uncle was offering extra credit to anyone who ever subscribed to my channel. And I remember that day vividly because I was at work and I was just getting blown up on my phone by a bunch of subscriptions and I couldn't figure out why. Um, and it's because he was offering extra credit for people that... Um, was subscribed to the channel. I think a lot of them stuck around too, because I mean, the numbers are showing today that it's, clearly they, they stuck around and I'm very thankful for that. But if it wasn't for him doing that, we would have never gotten introduced to Jacob from pirates cave. And we never gotten introduced to that haunt, nor have we would have gotten like all the uh, awesome behind the scenes stuff they've done for us over the years. Uh, they invited us out to the haunt. Uh, we got an exclusive behind the scenes tour before the haunt started to see how everything worked. And then, we got to go through the haunt and it was a lot of fun. I mean, they, they continue to impress every single year that we started going in 2019. That was a huge, like, you know, comeback, you know, uh, they had a lot of new stuff for them and they constantly, you know, are always thanking us. Cause like they say, we were like their first media, but like, I don't know, man, eventually their, their work would have spoke for themselves. Those guys are super talented. They didn't even need us, but they've been, they've been very grateful to invite us over the years and we've been very thankful for their friendship and their continued partnership and stuff because it's been a lot of fun. And so, yeah, we got the behind-the-scenes tour, then we got to go through the maze, and we were just blown away by Home Haunts. We, we, we saw a little preview of that at Midsummer Scream in 2019, but we finally got to go through a full Home Haunt during Haunt season. And that was thanks to them inviting us out for Pirate's Cave. We had a great time, and we would continue to have good times with them because they always put on uh, good shows that we'll talk about in the next two years coming up but i mean it was just a busy haunt season i mean we were trying to do new things we were going back and forth to horror nights and knots all the time uh that was the also the year we won the try not to get scared challenge at halloween horror nights and very happy about that because ever since then i have been the champion of the try not to get scared challenge since that day in 2019 they have not been able to take it back from me uh currently two-time back-to-back champ um and we'll see what happens for the fifth anniversary this year. But Haunt Season 2019 is definitely one to remember. It's in the books, and we definitely had a great time. I mean, we were meeting a bunch of new people. We were uh, exploring what other haunts there were other than the two we were just covering. And we were getting introduced to new things, and we had a good time doing so. Um, you know, we got to, like I said, we got to meet a lot of new people between both uh, scare actors and... Uh, you other YouTubers, so that was a lot of fun, but I, I really enjoyed myself. I did. Because we got to meet so much people during haunt season, that actually led us to do Scare Actor Appreciation Month in November, and that was the first time we did something. We came up with that mid-October when we were sitting around on the bench, and Sammy and I were talking about maybe doing a whole month dedicated to thanking Scare Actors for what they do at haunts. 
Uh, majority of the characters we had on that year were not scary farms characters, and majority of them were from Ghost Town. Um, but we did have a wide variety of talent on there from Ghost Town, Forsaken Lake, Carnival, um, The Hollow, you know. And then we even had, I think, like two HHN people. We had. Um, we had some hayride people. I mean, we, we were trying to really expand the horizons of that. And today we're still trying to do that, trying to get people that, you know, we, we find very talented or that we are, we want to have conversations with or just who are willing to tell their stories. Uh, we continue to keep inviting people on, keep inviting people back. It's, it's a lot of fun. I mean, that really launched for, we didn't think it was going to take off as much as it did. And it took off. I mean, you guys watched the episodes and you guys wanted more. There were some uh, monsters that we got on the show that people had never even heard their backstories or anything. So, you know, that definitely struck interest into a lot of people's, um, you know, eyes. I mean, people wanted to see how these guys prepared, what was the motivation for them wanting to join Haunt, and, and when it all started for them. So that was a lot of fun for us. And like I said, we continue to do that today. We did a much smaller scale version of that last year and had to, you know, end it early because of my mental health. But... Um, we continue to do it throughout the year. We try to keep that illusion alive and, and get people psyched for haunt season because we, we like to celebrate here year round. And a lot of these people sometimes will cosplay year round too. So it's a lot of fun to see that at conventions, at different events and whatnot. But that really, that really set the, the bar for us after, after interviewing Jackie that summer and then interviewing more people that November. I mean, it was, it was really something that sparked a lot in us. And if we could have done more, we would have. We were we were working every single day. I mean, interviewing people in person every single day in November. Um, sometimes doing double that night and stuff. So, and then posting them the very next day. So, I mean, it was a lot of fun to to do that. It was a lot of work because I was uploading constantly almost every day. I think we missed a few days in November, but for the most part, that entire month we were trying to upload and we're trying to still figure it out today because we want to get as much people on and recognize and and thank a lot of people for putting in the the time and effort that they do at haunts, but. We can only do so much as a person, <laughs> but 2019 was definitely uh, a stamped year for the Knights of Horror, and we thought 2020 was going to be bigger and better, and boy, were we wrong, <laughs> uh, but that definitely is a story for another time, so we are down to the last three episodes of Knights of Horror Origins, chapter 11, 12, and 13, which will be out in the next three days, so... Stay tuned to hear chapter 11, 2020, quarantine, year three, and then chapter 14 and chapter, or I'm sorry, chapter 12 and chapter 13. With all that being said, I'm your host, Anthony of the Knights of Horror. This is another episode of Knights of Horror Origins, and I'll see you guys tomorrow for another one.